Okay, last time, um, started with step 11, did all that. I did not do the uh, uh, extra fuel tank. I did not do the windscreen yet. I'm going to decide on that if I'm going to do that before I paint everything or after. So I also did not put the engine in place because I'm painting that uh, separately. So I get paint down in here good. And then um, I decided, I had to decide at this point here whether I wanted the wings extended or folded. And I've decided that I want folded purely due to space, uh, space requirements in my <clears throat> storage area. Because as you can see, the wingspan is pretty huge. And I just don't have that kind of room right now. And I've never done a folded wing aircraft, so I figured, hey, this one should be pretty cool. So, did the uh, step 12. Step 13, I did not glue these on because I wanted to paint those separately so I can get the inside and outside really well. And um, step 14, which was the uh, upper central wing portion. Got that glued together. And then that's that. So now I need to start with step 15. So the first thing I need to do <clears throat> is cut off B9, B8, B13, and B12. Then, once I get them cleaned up, I need to punch holes. Um, on B9 and B8 for the the rigging that comes in the photo edge set. Okay, I got everything all cleaned up and sanded on the front edges there. I've already done one wing. So the next thing I need to do is I need to punch holes here, 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 and here. And these here on the other wing punch through very easily, as you can hear, hopefully, that little click as they punch through, which is good because they're right on the edge and looks quite fragile so that's something you'd want to mess up these are a little bit longer need to make sure this one is punched out longer there we go then I'll use my knife and trim them down like that and yes, there's fingerprints, but I'll wash this off before I actually start painting stuff. So you got that, that, that one, that one. Okay. Now these here <coughs> are a bit thicker. I had a real time with that other wing, so let's see. These might be easier. They look thinner. Yeah, these are thinner. So that's weird. The other wing's a little bit thicker. Well, see, this one's a little bit thicker here. So it was kind of tough. I ended up using... There we go. That one went through. So that's something to look for if you build this kit. Some of these might be a little bit thicker due to the molding process. So anyway, those are done. So now I can start thinking about gluing them together. So first... Um, and I do need to do something different for version C, which is the one I'm doing. There are these strips right here. Strips, what am I talking about? They're decals. So that's C29, C28. So obviously I won't be putting those on right now. Yeah, see these decals right here. 
Those will come later. And I might even paint them on, but we'll see. But anyway, that's not something I have to mess with right now. So before I glue these together, I also need to drill some holes. So let me get my one millimeter drill out. And it looks like I need to drill um, one there. Just on this wing here. And then I need to drill these here on both G20 and G21. So let me get my drill out. All right, so next I need to glue the wings together. So we'll start with this one here. Make sure it all fits together properly, which it looks like it does. I'll have to do some clamping all the way around it looks like. Let me see how it's going to take clamps because sometimes when you clamp stuff it makes the, uh, the edge worse. Okay so there's nothing weird going to go on there. And then back here Man, I have to clamp that. I may can just squeeze it together and hold it for a second. There might be a few spots where I need to clamp it. Yeah, it looks like it'll be all right. So let's get some clamps down here and have them ready. And then let's glue it together. Fortunately, there are no, there's one right there and there, um, something that might have to be re, here and here that might have to be rescribed, but that's it. So that's, that's a cool thing. All right, so let's get some, to me, extra thin here. Let's start gluing stuff. I'm going to start with the back side here, the trailing edge. And this I'm going to make sure it has plenty of time to dry like overnight because I don't want the edges to roll or do anything weird because it's not fully cured whenever I start to sand it. Okay, so let's squeeze all that together. See there's a little nice little bead of cement that's coming out. Which means it's melting together really well which will make it real easy to sand so I'm gonna put some clamps on here Okay, so the one wing is done. So now I'm gonna do the other one real quick like. All 
All right, so while the upper wings are drying, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the parts off for the uh, for the lower wings. So I'm going to start with the left lower wing, which is G21 and C3. Okay, so for this, I need to part C3, which is the upper part of the lower wing. I need to punch some holes for the photo etch again, just like before. And these actually punch through a lot easier. So I've got those there, and then I also need to punch here. And here, then I need to punch here and here. I'm going to need to do the same thing on the other side. And these are punching a lot easier than that upper wing did. So we got that. Then I also need to cut these ribs off here and here. So these need to be cut off. Then I'm going to need to drill my one millimeter holes in uh, these, but I'll get to those in a minute. So basically to cut these off, I'm just going to use my cutter here and uh, may have to end up no I should be able to get it like this I don't have any flat like chisel type blades right now because my local supplier has been out for a while which you know it's par for the course with all this pandemic silliness not to downgrade the pandemic or anything but you know it is making it rough for a lot of things and this is definitely a first world problem so let it be known no gripes here because of that there are more important things in the world than having a flipping blade for your knife I will tell you that so let's see let's see I have you know I think I may have a blade I did have one it's for a uh, tool set my dad gave me years ago so I should be able to scrape that baby off like that oh, like a charm I don't know how smooth that needs to be but that is right down to the level of the surrounding surface there. So that's good. So that takes care of what needs to be done with um, C3. So G21, we got to do the same thing. I need to, there's no holes to punch with the special tool here, but I do need to cut that out and then I need to drill the holes. So I got those trimmed down. So now all I need to do is um, drill the holes. So let me orient this. This one is actually a mirror image of the illustration. So I gotta pay attention. But we've got one here. You know what? As a matter of fact, I am going to mark these. So I need to do this one, this one, this one, this one, and these two. And that's just taking these cool little drill bits here. I 
drilling them right out like that. So next, I just need to put this together. And there are some smaller parts that need to uh, go on here as well, as well, but I don't have to do those um, till after I get this together. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now let's see, we got a little, got a little nick right here. Let me level that out. Looks good, looks good. Like a little, like something hit it straight on. So I need to make sure that is flattened out. Okay. So now I should be good to glue this together. Yep, there we go. So now I can glue it. Okay, that one's done and drying. So now I can cut the other parts off and get those going. So I need to cut off C2 and G20. All right, all my wings have now been glued together and have had plenty of time to cure. So now I am going to sand these babies down. Well, not sand them down, but sand the uh, edges here. Make sure there's no uh, seam. Although, in uh, doing a little bit of research, there actually, I think, was a seam on the front of these wings. It's just uh, in scale, they'd be invisible. So we'll just sand these babies off. Or maybe I'll rescribe them. No, I'm kidding. Scribing the front edge of a wing would be a nightmare. So we'll just sand these babies up a little bit. All right, next, <clears throat> I need to glue K9, K7, and K10 in place. Now, this part right here, F7, is a clear part. I'm not gonna do that till one of the very last things of the build, so I'm gonna glue these parts in place, and then um, everything will be painted, and then I'll detail paint this stuff as I need to. Okay, so I got it. Um, I got it, the parts cut off. So now I just need to glue this in place. Now, I don't know if you can see it. Let's try and zoom a little bit. There's like a half moon shaped hole. Well, that's not actually a hole. I mean, it's just like a half moon shaped divot that this, there's a round peg on the back that it kind of sits on top of it. So, Let's see if I can do this without losing it because this is a really tiny little part. Oh yeah, no problem. With my brand new bottle, Tamiya Extra Thin. 
so no more having to clack it around with that obnoxious noise just to get some cement on the brush all right so I got this part put in place which is a uh, K9 like like a dog so I'll put a little bit of uh, cement on here like that and then we've got this one here that whoa almost launched it that would have been a tragedy indeed there we go yeah it fits really good so put a little bit of cement on that oh stellar so we'll carefully set that aside and that will finish step number 15. Okay, so step 16 is to glue the upper and lower halves of the wings together. So here's a place where it, whether you are doing the folded wings or the extended wings, depends on which one of these bracing units that a person would use. So since I'm doing folded, I need C11. So I need to cut off C11, C1, C8, and then I'm going to need some photo edge. So let me get those parts cut off and uh, we can move on from there. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing I'm going to do before I start committing to cement is I'm going to make sure <clears throat> that these parts um, actually fit into these slots I cut. And if they don't, then I can adjust them accordingly. So, there's okay. because I think it would be a lot harder to fit these after the fact. Okay, those are good. And then let's see. I need to, I think, adjust these other ones here because they don't look quite big enough. So I'm going to See, that one pop through a lot better. Let me check that one. Okay, so this would be my recommendation to anybody that's building this. Use this tool and then make sure that it's open from this side as well. Um, it doesn't take much, but just make sure it's cleared out and uh, you shall be good to go. All right, so now I am ready to start gluing these together. So I'm gonna just kind of slide these over to the side a little bit because I'm not ready for them quite just, just quite yet, quite just yet, however you say that. Nick Spreckensy. Um, okay, so these go together here. So the first thing I need to do is, let's see, let me orient these as they appear on the instructions. Okay, so we got this. 
So this thing here fits like that. And then this one will fit here like this. But before I do that, since this is going to be exposed, I need to take care of these ejector pin marks here. They're pretty shallow, but I think I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other. And I'm going to use... the ultraviolet glue since that seemed to work really well on the other one so let us do so like this and then take whoops take the handy dandy UV light and shine on there okay so I got those um, sanded down so now I can actually glue these in place and just put a little bit of cement on here and then I'm gonna clamp it together and just for the record um, in doing a little bit of uh, looking around. I found a good uh, video on YouTube. If I remember, I'll put a link in the comments section down below for anybody that you know, might want to watch it. But it shows uh, the restoration of one of these. And it's very interesting because, you know, it really shows all the stuff they had to do to get it flyable again and uh, it's really interesting and had some good shots of the end of the wings in their folded position which was kind of cool because it does show that there is no detail other than what's on these rods it's perfectly flat so that was kind of cool so I'm gonna let this dry for a bit and then come back okay with that glue now I'm going to glue this in place and nice thing is is once again to me it has been thoughtful enough to do it in such a way that you can't do it backwards. There's a pin here and a hole there, so all you have to do is put it in place like that. But I need to So here's something to look for. There's a couple of pins right here, little bumps. And that is where, so this fits really tight. And that's where these parts here, these photo etch parts have a little notch and they fit in. Okay, so again, I'm not going to put those in until after I get all the plastic stuff done. But that's why those little pieces are there, so don't scrape them off. 
a little bit more clean up here on this seam line or this part fits into the wing. Scrape it off like that. Like that. So then this part goes, whoops, right here. So I need to push that into place. Use my tweezers. That's a really positive connection there. I like that. My good grief, it's so tight in there you wouldn't even have to wouldn't even have to glue it really. But I'm gonna anyway. Like that so then I'm gonna glue this part in place as well that way when I put the whole wing together um, everything will already be in place so this goes here but in this case actually it would be better To glue this in place first because that's got a little square deal let's take a look and see how it's going to work so this fits here those two pieces fit there and then this piece fits yeah i, I can glue this later because it's flexible enough i can pop it into place so This is the tricky part. So let's put these in place. You know what? Let's clean these up a little bit more. I should have done this before I glued them in place, but sometimes hindsight is the 2020. And these parts are pretty robust so that chance of me breaking them off is pretty slim. <clears throat> Alright, so let's get this thing glued. Let's do these first. There we go. That one and that one. Like that. Oh yeah. Okay. So let's do this first. Like this. Hold that for a minute. Get the front. Make sure that is bottomed out. Oh, 
that one wants to twist out for some reason. So I'm gonna hold it in here for a sec. All right, so now I can glue this part here. The same way I did the other parts. Once it dries, I'll, uh, I'll clean it up. <laughs> like that. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to work on the other wing doing the same thing. And then I will come back and uh, put the other plastic support and the photo etch supports. All right, so the wings are done um, as far as uh, the plastic goes, except for this part here, which I'll go ahead and glue on really quick, this support here. Now, there, it goes one direction. It's kind of teardrop shaped. So you want the narrow part facing back. So, whoops. So, square peg goes in square hole, round peg goes in round hole, like that, like a glove. So I'll glue that in on both sides, then I can start working on the photo edge. So while I'm gluing this, um, off camera, I did a little bit of checking, and uh, I wanted to make sure that the wings were going to fit on the supports. on the aircraft. So, for example, this part here that goes on top, this fits in this slot here. Okay. This fits on these here. So what I had to do is I, te I went to test fit them and uh, I had to use my knife and enlarge the holes just a little bit as you can see the plastic's really thin right there where it's supposed to be cut off so it's easy to trim from the outside so it's no big deal it's pretty easy actually so let me glue these the support on this other one and then we'll start working on the photo edge okay so before i get into uh gluing these photo etch supports, rigging, whatever you want to call it, before I glue that into place, I do need to do something else because number one, I need to let these dry really good so I can sand them and that's going to have to be overnight. So I'm going to leave that, but I need to, um, I want to glue this on here. So I need to come up with a plan on how I can do this and get it masked and ready to go. Um, so I can uh, paint it in place so the framework gets painted along with the rest of the aircraft. So first, I got that cut off. So now I need to, you know what, I'm actually gonna use a knife. Trim this flat. Like that. Okay, so let's see how this fits, first of all. And what I'll have to do, oh yeah, that fits really well. So I'm going to have to paint this part here first. And then I can glue this in place. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to paint that black. And while that's the black is drying, then um, I'm going to make some masks for this here, which shouldn't be too difficult because it's all straight stuff. So it should be fairly easy. So first things first, let's paint that. 
NATO Black, Vallejo Model Air, is the color I'm going to use to paint that. So, let us... Begin. Like that. And you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead. It's going to be under glue and frame paint. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint this as well with the black. Probably not right. Maybe should be the uh, fuselage color but it's like I said it's not going to matter because I'm going to have it the frame is going to be painted and it will cover this up All right, just like that. Okay, got it masked. So now all I gotta do is glue it in place. Like this. Hope it sticks. Just like that. Now we'll let that dry. <clears throat> okay, so I did not video this because it was way, way too, uh, uh, complex of a thing to do but I got the rigging on the um, on the wings the cross rigging so the next part I need to do <clears throat> is step 17 which is these long pieces that are uh, kind of held together with this cross member but again, I'm not going to do this on um, on video. It's too hard. I have to move around too much, and even the time lapse would take hours. So I'm going to work on that and then come back. All right, so here is um, the rigging complete. There. There and the rigging on the tail. So I gotta say, um, in hindsight, there's probably some things that a person could do to ensure that it works correctly. Um, and this, you know, for the most part worked out correctly, but I think it could have been easier if I would have um, done some more pre-planning not knowing exactly how this stuff was going to fit in there but in the end it all worked and it's good to go so with that i'm going to end uh part six which was steps 15 through 17 so next time come back we'll be on 18 and start working on this um but until then that's it for now for the uh to me, a 148 scale fairy swordfish mark two so as always if you have any hints tips anything like that leave them in the comment section down below and until next time i will see you all later